I mean, crutches in this city. If I ever have to get on crutches again, I might kill myself. Dude, first. crutches it's, as an adult is, a, is dude, tough. Dude, crutches going up the subway stairs. Oh. It's like it's a thirty minute. Pro- and no one helps. No. People get like kick you out of the way. People get so mad, and it's like it's impossible to. There's no. It's the one time where you're like, man, I don't understand how handicapped people get around in this city. There's like four <laughs> elevators in the whole goddamn city. Hey you. Come a little closer. Come a little closer. Just a little bit closer. Subscribe to the channel now. Walks are not easy, bro. Tiring. Dude, they are. How far did you go? Having a dog makes walking the dog. Like, that's like, I kind of like that it forces me to walk. Walk. Because otherwise I wouldn't do shit. It's fun. Let's see. Today I've been at 10,000 steps. Alrighty. Wow. Uh, yeah. God damn, that's a long walk. That's and a I long walk. During, I went for a walk with Mark. He's like, I'll go for a walk. And I was like, yeah. What time in the morning did you go for a walk? Uh, I met him in Battery Park at 10. So. Wow. Dude, did you see go that? for a walk with Mark. Wait, hang on, hang on. Yeah, are, hang we, on. are we running past? It sounds like a delight. Don't get me wrong. That's something I'm almost jealous. I would like, like part of me wants to be a part of the Mark Roberge, Feidelberg, Walker. This is Mark. He's the lead singer of, of a revolution. Okay. So it's not like you're just going for a walk with some Jamoke. Sure. You're going for a walk with a guy who's got stories and he's a great dude. But you went for a walk with Mark? <laughs> like, what does that mean? So, like, 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 it was cold this morning. Yeah, it was not nice. a great day to go for a walk. It was the. I guess it was clear, but it was cold. It was it's like one of the first like 30 degree days. And so who, who initiates? Mark, uh, he likes to have um, like his meetings taking walks. And I, I oh, heard. okay. So there was like it's you not, guys were going to talk about something. No, not really. It's not really a meeting. It was just like it was a meeting of minds. But okay. it was just like let's just chat. <laughs> okay, like, but that that I can kind of understand. Like we got, I want to talk to you. We could do it on the phone. We could do it over coffee. How about we just walk? <laughs> yeah, it would be a little bit but funnier it was just, if it was just, just like, like hey, bro, like, I'm going to. No, what, what, like, was it like, hey, I'm going to go for a walk. You want to come? Uh, it well, yeah, it's it's a walk that's been in, in the works for a little while. I don't know what's crazier. I'm pretty, I don't know what's crazier if it's in the moment your boy being like, let's go for a walk because that's gay, <laughs> or or is it crazier to have it like on the schedule, like circle it on the day? I think the crazier thing is the fact that he said it was a meeting of the minds and you ignored it and went right past it and didn't address <laughs> how well, fucking they, crazy they, that they, is they, to say they, earnestly. They talked. You know, you guys have had some talk about doing music content before, like that. That's not that. Yes, that sounds crazy, but. It would be like, you know, me and him talking about business or something like that. Yeah, like, no, just, but it's just, I, I want to make it clear, it's just the phrase, a meeting of the minds. It was minds. a meeting of the yeah. minds, baby. <laughs> yeah. earnest, I've never someone, heard someone earnestly say especially in that sweater, dude, it sells it. You know? and, and then you walk for corner. about an hour and a half. Wow. Good walk. Yeah, dude, I, I, the, was, the walk I was is, out of gas. I was very winded during that especially walk. Especially if you, if you... There were a couple of times where I was like... Just hang on for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie my shoe for five You'd be like out of the water. I'd be like, let's just check out the statue. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're walking down by the water. It's just not only is it cold, it's but then the you got wind. the wind. Yeah. You got the off, offshore breeze. Crazy town, man. <laughs> I, I, I do find it funny that like pretty much all you need to do, not all, but to just be like relatively functioning. Yeah. It's like drink water, walk, and probably stretch. Like a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm so bad at stretching, I, I man. Don't, I mean, the bar is like on the fucking floor, you know? Like, yeah. just drink the water, walk around a little bit, and like touch your toes every now and then. And I think you'll probably be in better shape than like 90% of the population. Can oh. you guys at touch least your in toes? America. I feel like I, you can yeah. touch your toes. Oh, oh heavens no. No, no, no. I, bro, I am bizarrely flexible. This guy is a stone statue. This I, guy can't touch his knees. I've never even come close Let's to see. How, how, how close <laughs> can you get you? This is terrible. I, I, I want to see who's worse between you and him. It's I, I think, oh, he's. Look at this. Oh, that's that's. Wait, no, you're betting me. All right, if straight leg, that's it, dude. That's as far. Oh, you, that's twice as much as him. No if I don't gonna touch his knees. That's about it. Yeah. Dude, look at this. But like, like if I if I'm like, <laughs> does that really hurt? It doesn't hurt, but I feel it. But well, like, I'm, I'm like, bam. <laughs> down like, it feels no it feels like, like the back of my knees are gonna explode. explode. Yeah. Like what I did. I my grandfather was get there. Get there. Dude, my grandfather That's was better so... better in years. Maybe it's because of your walk. <laughs> my grandfather was so inflexible when he was going to boot camp for World War II. They uh, they were like, touch your toes. And like the drill... I know he's the same thing as me. He couldn't even come close. And the drill sergeant was like, touch your fucking toes. And he's like, I, this is his mouth. So he was bent over like I just was. This drill sergeant jumped on his back to try to get him to... like Because he wasn't listening. And then, of course, just fucking face planted the thing. The drill sergeant's like... <laughs> <laughs> 
all right, back in line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, my bad. Sorry about that, dude. I fucked I'm up. I'm surprised he didn't blow his fucking hamstrings out. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, that dude, was... that is. Uh, it's Ugh. again. It's like all. It's bare bare bones. And I'm Maybe just it's like... like a getting older thing to do, but like I feel like stretching is such a requirement. I've started doing like. Try to try to do jujitsu, and it's like I I show up there thirty minutes ahead of time to start warming yeah. up. It's like me and all the old heads, and then like twenty two year olds show up like as the class is starting. They're like changing as they're walking onto the mat, and then just full Fuck your shit up. full roll without any without tearing anything. It's like it's crazy. Yo, Wait, that's let's... a crazy thing to take off yeah. at this age. Like, yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. I, it's, it's, it's it's something with the comedy world. All you comedians got to fight. Jiu Jitsu or MMA or yeah. something. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Jiu Jitsu I liked because it's like, they also offer Muay Thai there, and I'm like, I kind of dabble with that, but it's like, for me, I don't want to be like getting kicked and hit in the head. And like, Jiu Jitsu is the only thing where you can fight at like 100% force without like going getting brain damage you yeah, know what i mean yeah, like you're yeah. not like kneeing people in right, the head right, it's, it's right. just like kind of like submission-y things and it's also a great workout i fucking hate working out so it's a good excuse to sweat my ass off and fight and like learn some shit at the same time how long have you been doing that it's only since april so like it, obviously yeah, yeah yeah and i've been hurt the entire time <laughs> yeah. I, just, I was consistent. gonna say I, I my my rule for people i'm like when you're 30 you should hang them up because you're gonna yeah. like blow out a knee playing Zog sports soccer. You're yeah, gonna yeah. you're gonna need like major surgery and miss time with work and family and shit, all for some like intramurals team. And that's when you're we're talking about like you know softball. You're doing yeah. fucking jiu-jitsu. yeah. I, I also like wreck, and I'm also not only am I highly injury injury prone, but the last time I was playing sports, I did I was in a, like a beer league softball team, and we were in the last, literally the last out of the playoffs. Pop up hit to me on third base. I go to go under it, and there was just a divot in the infield, and I just cranked my ankle and just just blew it to pieces. <laughs> just uh, like like surgery? months, no surgery, thank God. But it was like just months on on crutch. And, uh, and the, and the wall. I mean, crutches in this city. If I ever have to get on crutches again, I might kill myself. Dude, first. crutches it's, as an adult is, a, is dude, tough. Dude, crutches going up the subway stairs. Oh. It's like it's a thirty minute. Pro- and no one helps. No. People get like kick you out of the way. People get so <laughs> mad, and it's like it's impossible to. There's no. It's the one time where you're like, man, I don't understand how handicapped people get around in this city. I there's know. like four <laughs> elevators in the whole goddamn city. <laughs> I watched a blind guy today going into our building. And he just missed it, went like uh, two, a door and a half down. And our doorman saw him and ran out and was like, yo, hey, whatever your name is, like, you missed, come back. Because, I don't know, he just counted his steps wrong that day I or actually, whatever. The trust and then you. as he was walking, he had the stick and he like hid into our scaffolding. And I could tell the doorman didn't want to be like patronizing and go like grab him, but also was trying to direct him. And I was like... Dude, what would have happened if this doorman wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, I don't think I don't think you can be you, patronizing. Once you're disoriented, you lose. I don't think you can allow yourself to be patronized if you're blind. I think it's kind of like I, a, a I gotta I gotta really hope that the world is nice, you yeah. know, because I have to be incredibly trusting of everyone around me at, at all, all times. times. Well, the they shouldn't do that because I I one time had that where I was I was the exact thing. I was like, I don't want to patronize the guy. I'll let him do it, and it didn't work out. <laughs> and what happened? It? it was a scaffolding situation where. His wand went under the bar. Oh, so he so, so he, he thought, thought there so was something I, there, and oh. I was like, I was behind him, and I was like, oh, this is gonna end bad. Yeah, and it basically just directed him right into a pole. <laughs> and, oh, that's what uh, happened? And I, yeah, what was he gonna do? <laughs> Like, but dude, like, hey, him, buddy, this way, this way. This like, is yeah, how, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is how like paranoid I am. If I were blind, I think about this a lot. If because I, I had to, uh, this is hilarious. I think about how uh, blind I would be uh, as a blind guy. C- today, this morning, I had an eyelash in my eye for like two hours, and again, oh. like ready to kill myself. Never been more grateful about life now that it's out of my eye. <laughs> but just a uh, constant war. But dude, if I were blind. I, at all times, I would think there's someone in the room You're silently, swinging. just silent, not even like attacking me, just like silently observing or like tr- about to rob me or like pickpocket. <laughs> even in my own home, I wouldn't feel safe. Like it's a constant, I'd be in a constant state of fucked, you we, know? We, we, I, I never thought of that, the like getting into like, like streets, I see how they work and that stuff. I never thought of like finding the right building. Finding the building? How do you do Fi- that? Getting like to the right spot and then like, Getting back, you have to retrace See, but that, all your steps. You, that like, is easier now than it's ever been because just Siri voice, yeah, like, yeah, Google yeah, direction, yeah, yes. the thing. But right. it, back, but mean, even then, even when I'm using directions, I get lost. So yeah. I don't know, and I can see it. You yeah, know? but yeah, when they're like, go north, I'm like. <laughs> 
What the fuck? I don't what, does a guy up? know what north is? Yeah. What is he yeah. feeling for the fucking moss on side yeah. of the trees? Like, what the hell is he going to Well, know? that's also, it's like if you're born with it versus if you lose it. Like, if you're born with it, it's probably like, you know, I don't know. I just dealt with it my whole life. If you lose your sight, put me out to pasture, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, see no, you I, fucking later. I hate that. I uh, hate that so much. We just did a, a uh, like a challenge here on one of our videos where we wore like blackout goggles that were like blackout, yeah. you know, and it was like, you don't realize the difference between like if I were to tie like a scarf around your head versus like blackout your eyes. Right. And it is. You just have disoriented. Yeah. I, I actually, now that we just said I but saw being blind with suck, like I, f- I found it rather zen where I was like, all right, this is cool. Just close my eyes. Really? Yeah. Well, Final Break is just careening towards death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You really eternal darkness. You really are the Mister Magoo of Barstool, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you somehow like are just walking through life, seemingly just missing, falling off of skyscrapers. Yeah. <laughs> you like land in a pillow factory or something. Like you're the only person. That's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you, it's uh, you would love the de- like the the thought of just eternal darkness. <laughs> Dude, do you ever think about this? I see, uh, I see a lot of you know because I'll drive into the city to do spots and stuff, and then I'll I always see there's a car accident at least every single time. Always. right? I saw one upside down on Delancey Street the other day, just like in like the left lane. Like the cops were like just showing up, and I was like, is that tires? And they're like, you know, just right here. Uh, and like you know, you always yeah, I don't know. I always play like the what happened, like what's going on. And a lot of times you're like, I'm sure it's somebody on their phone. But I do feel like how many cars accidents do you think a year are caused by people driving on the highway and then in a moment remembering like a hardcore repressed trauma and it devastating them and then <laughs> being like oh fuck I was molested and then they just like, hit a wall just from being like distracted bro that is a dark thought. <laughs> the thought of like you're in your car upside down, the police are showing up, and you're and you're still just worried about the fact that you were molested. Yeah, instead. dude. Like it could take your because you ever like get lost in a thought where you have that highway hypnosis, where, and all of a sudden, and then if something were to be like, oh my god, and then yeah. next thing you know, you're you know, you're I will die. Up. Um, I will die falling asleep at the wheel. I get that oh, when, yeah? when the when like if I if I'm a passenger in a car, yeah, I'll go right to sleep. That yeah. like. That sort of feeling the of just white, like yeah, eating up miles noise. on the highway, yeah, I that'll take me out no problem. It'll be my death when I'm like seventy. Well, now it's not good because those cars have the like it keeps you in the lane sort yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah, so like my car is like yeah, it, and it also has the cruise control where it'll like keep pace with the car in front of me. So now it's like I'm basically in an auto spaceship where I can just kind of I just recline the seat. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, so you you mentioned driving in and out. So you yeah. live in Queens. Where? Queens. Yeah. You have a one-year-old. Yeah. How is that with the comedy life? Because I feel like a lot of guys, you know, I know you and can and have kids. Yeah. Chrissy D. But I feel like so much when you're coming up is like you're just doing spots all the time. It's very it's sure. kind of a selfish life. And then all of a sudden when you make that switch, it's like I'm I'm actually I think it happened at a great time for me because I wasn't uh I wasn't like it would have been bad if it was the first I don't know, even 10 years of me doing stand up because it is so much like not a, not only just hustling but like going out with the prospect of hoping to get out you know what I mean it's like a lot yeah. of like waste not wasted nights but you're just like I don't know maybe I'll get up let's see what happens and you're out till midnight and then you do or you don't get up now I'm in a place where I'm like when I'm going in it's like I'm a fucking Navy SEAL with this shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm coming into the city. I'm tactical. I find, like, I do the spot. I hang off a little bit. Then I get the hell out Mm -hmm. of there and get home. But, I mean, those first, you know, the first four months, you know, before they're sleeping, it was is was brutal. Tell him, also, tell him what happened last night. Tell him the sleep schedule. Oh last night. yeah, he, he's been sleeping great. He's been sleeping like twelve hours. Last night he just he just was sick last week, so he decided last night woke up at one forty five a.m. I went to bed at eleven thirty. Woke up at one forty five a.m. and then uh, didn't go back to sleep until five. And it was just my How wife about and that I, life, John. Just just my wife and I just <laughs> rotating. Just like your turn, trying to put him down. And he's, by the way, here's what crushes you about it. It's he's not screaming, crying the whole time. He's he he wants just to be he- so like he's dead asleep, and you're like, oh, perfect, he's out. And then the second you put him down, eh, and it just uh, it, dude, failure. it's so demoralizing because yep. you're like, oh, I know, I, I you're so fucking close to sleeping, dude. <laughs> you're so close. If he was crying the whole time, it'd be way, it'd be like, it would almost be better because you're like, we're not even close to putting this kid I, down. I used to find that like I would just stop trying 
Yeah. I, I would rather just like sit with the kid, put on like a fucking documentary. It would, be like it, I, I'm gonna just be up at like 3 a.m. rather than constantly try go. It going got back to, to that sleep. point where yeah. we're like, should we just start the day at yeah. five? Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, but yeah. it's like, but it was a thing of my wife was like, I need like at least one hour sleep. I need to have at least an hour sleep. So we we kept trying, and thankfully, Dude, eventually, one went down. hour right now would murder me. I was like. I, don't, I, I honestly just don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't get How, what, what, why would you do it? What do you 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 started to wake up early now though, right? Uh, like early ish. Like I'm probably I'm probably eight eight thirty. So and you'll go to bed when? I'm probably in bed at midnight, and then I'll probably watch a show or two in there. But yeah, so you're always getting like at least eight hours. Um, no, that's like six. Twelve to eight. Well, I mean, I say I watch a show or two. In oh, there. okay, okay, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that you wouldn't be that. I mean, there was a time where I feel like you were, you know, waking up at like ten. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like that. But those, that, I was yeah, my pre kid, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I guess pre- it is all kind yeah. of relevant. my pre kid life was always waking up. I never woke up before ten. I wake up at. I would say I woke up before ten, but I would set my alarm for nine fifty five. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, an alarm <laughs> for nine fifty five is the most <laughs> fake life shit I've yeah. ever heard in my life. If my alarm didn't go off at any day of the week, I would sleep. I could sleep right now for six hours if you just turn the lights off. And you, if you give me those blackout goggles, I'm done but until now, someone now violently. You, well, especially when you have kids. You yeah. could just pass out, but yeah, like yeah. prior to your kid, you could just. I've been I, when out. I was a kid, I could sleep twelve hours at a time. I've always been. I've never had any problem with sleep, and I've always been like a. Every t- every single day I wake up, I go fuck. I wish I had more of that. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to get back into that. But then I'm also a night owl, so I stay up till two in the morning. I would stay up till two in the morning, and then be pissed that I only got you Dude, know. I, I mean, I remember as a kid staying up watching just like the dumbest shit on TV till like. Three, four in the morning. Just <laughs> yeah, for no reason. No, no nothing. Yeah. It gains nothing by uh, doing oh, that. Oh, dude, I'm on season 11 of Criminal Minds right now. Just right, there's just always... Dude, I'm getting I into would, World watch... War II shit. And oh, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. I'm watching, that's... like, colorized World War II documentaries and shit, like, seeing, like, real footage. I'm, that's like, fucking... You know. I'm, like, pumping my fist about the Battle of Midway. Like, I'm, like, really? <laughs> I'm in, dude. Mike, yeah, well, dude, it's over, I, I always... You got a one-year-old <laughs> and you're cheering about World War II documentaries, your life is over. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've said this before, that we are... A very lucky people that Hitler existed. Because, <laughs> <laughs> we get so. This much. is a this is a theory that we need to explain very fully every time. Yeah, we're yeah. Bring you it can't up. just say that but, and dude, check the out the entertainment we get from World War II movies, documentaries, uh-huh. things like that. Like Hollywood's built on <laughs> on Hollywood's built on major Hitler. World War II movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a lucky thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, for some people it was lucky. Think about, for the Jews, I not mean, as lucky, I feel like, for a bit there. If it was, yeah, the Jews probably don't agree, but if it wasn't for Hitler, what would be the symbol of evil? Uh... Maybe I mean it would be World War One, right? But it's like even that. It's like but even that. He's not a guy. We need a guy. We got a guy. We still be like Genghis Khan. Everything would come back to like because World War Two is just at the right time where you can still use machine guns and it's modern enough. Like if we're fighting on horseback, we're not as interested. And also Genghis, yeah, Genghis Khan feels like it was so long ago. And the numbers I hear about him are almost like that's a movie. I don't know. It's like he slaughtered like eight billion people. Well, like, how about the thing? Know. How about the thing that he killed the two thousand people that attended his funeral? I just saw that he had them all. Everyone that attended his funeral because they wanted they didn't want to have like grave robbers or anybody know where he was buried. So the two thousand people, which back then it's like a lot of people to show two thousand people showed up to his funeral. They were all slaughtered right afterwards, and then the people who slaughtered them killed themselves. Shut I mean, you talk it. about a. Fu- they have no idea where to this day. They have no idea where he was I where he's. Know that, that and awesome. you're like, it's like, well, you would think also be like wherever the the two thousand bodies were is probably he's probably close. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they were doing a bus tour. You know what I mean? I mean? Like one more stop, you guys, come on, <laughs> right over the fucking ditch. But they, they, imagine being the, like, thank you, good yeah. night, to like yeah. you know the Hulu theater, and yeah. then just <laughs> yeah, just flaming them, just yeah. killing them all. John That's, Belushi had to be moved because so John Belushi's buried on Martha's Vineyard, and they had no to move way. his body because it was turned into such like a party scene. That's awesome. Oh, people like pouring some Jack on his yeah, grave. Like, like, yeah, like and then, but, and then once like, he moved, though, people like people really wanted it to be the, his grave, so they stopped doing it. Uh, yeah, because to me, I, I would just keep going to that spot. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is now like the John Belushi dead party spot. Yeah, you're like uh, you're like the OG. Like I was partying here before yeah. it was cool. Yeah. Before he got <laughs> fucking the body moved, was in there. Yeah, yeah. that is. Uh, I feel like the best thing that could happen in life is if you're if you lived such a life. 
Well, you know, probably not like overdosing and dying early. You know, maybe. <laughs> but yeah. if you lived such a life that your grave turns into a party spot. Yeah, but where's Chris Farley? I mean, he's what is he? He's probably buried in Wisconsin, oh, I would imagine. Right? Yeah. That would be a good one. That's another that would one probably be a good one wanna... too. But it's like again, all those stories of the party guys end pretty tragic. Pretty, pretty, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah, it feels really that? <laughs> kind of it feels kind of dark, you know, <laughs> celebrating at those things. Yeah, you yeah, of course you're right on that. Yeah. But but I don't know, man. Yeah, it's just it's strange with the with the kid now. You just kind of like you, you know, you just fucking get through it. Like those first like three months, four months it was like a, a legitimate nightmare every day of being like, we made a terrible mistake of yeah. having a kid. But then once it's like the difference is, dude, is like once they start having a personality and they're like cool as shit, then you're like, okay, it's yeah. worth. Like he like opened, sneezed in my face yesterday, and you're like, just you're lucky it's you, dude. You know what I mean? Like anybody else, but you're fucking, you're, you know. Then he like he looks at you, he goes like, eh, he gives you a little smirk, and you're like. All right, you're fucking good with it. But that was why also, like, this was the dumbest thing that I did, which it's like, you know, I just I just put out this comedy special, but uh, I, um, I'm, I'm plugging, but I'm, it's all ties into this is because uh, when I shot it, he was 10 weeks old. So I was in the middle of, like, the worst, like, yeah. zero fragmented sleep. If you look at it, I, I don't know if people can tell, but, like, for me, I have, like, deep purple bags under my <laughs> eyes of just being, like, I didn't, you don't, dude, you feel like you're, almost like stone it's like an out of body yeah. you don't know what's going on cuz you're not it's not that you're not on enough sleep it's that you're not even on like a consistent fragmented sleep it's like i get 2 hours at 5 in the afternoon uh 3 hours at midnight and then 1 hour at 9 a.m. it's like your body is is going through hell dude the uh, i remember being in that like like falling asleep like like talking to someone uh, you know one of the business people yeah yes you know some shit i and being like, uh huh, uh huh, like literally yeah. falling asleep in front of someone's face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're like, yeah, are like, you? Oh my good? god, like, are you drunk? I, right? I, I yeah, like, we're trying to have I a meeting older. of the mind here. Yeah. Why are you falling asleep? <laughs> I noticed that as I get older, that like it used to be when you wake up, you're just you. Like, like, yeah. like, like all through my childhood, college, even the twenties, like I woke up and whatever my fully functioning brain is, I was on that right away. Yeah. I was like, I was good to go. And now I have like two hours a day where I can talk and think and at your, at your be, high capacity. Be, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Otherwise I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, I got, yeah, I'll, like, I'll go home in an hour and be like, well, I, I walked and talked today. I talked on radio today. I did this. I was like, I'm, I'm out. I had my three hour window. When, when people used to talk about like, uh, you know, like taking a test like was it early in the morning or was it in the afternoon or whatever i was like i don't know it's yeah. all the same to me like, <laughs> the, you either know the question or you don't and now it's like oh no 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 no! i got that wrong or i did that because i was fucking you know, tired yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. For <laughs> again because sure. you don't walk or drink water or stretch that's all we have to do <laughs> and eat like a smidge better Dude, yeah you know? it, it is just it's ju- you, can, you can knock out the other it's just water yeah, I know. Water is like the key to life. I go to the doctor. He's like, "You're like the healthiest person I've ever seen." I know. <laughs> I used to make I used to make fun of like all my friends and I. Like you, everyone drank soda when they were kids. At my like when you're like 12, like all of our friends. I was like a Sprite guy. My friend was a Coke guy. I think I was a root, root beer guy. And my one friend drank nothing but water. And I can't explain how much shit he got for that. Yeah. Like, we were, <laughs> Drinking water is we, so good. We called him every name in the book our whole childhood, and he was. Shockingly, the only 12 year old with six pack abs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, his kid was ripped and in great shape and had in- incredible cardio, played basketball for like five hours without stopping. Shockingly, it probably did, had something to do with the kid? water. I drink mostly water, yeah. I, I, w- I would have some juicy fruit. Uh, juicy my, juice my kids drink not to a bizarre extent. Like, you want some apple juice? No. You want to try soda? No. Just Chocolate water? milk? No. Just water. That's the bat. That's great, yeah. though. So, so I want to keep them on that. was the, uh, the all sport. The carbonated mm. sports beverage was... Uh, short I, lived... I get that at the rank, where like because they had an all sport machine. All I... sport was was uh, burned hot and heavy for a moment, yeah. but it never really caught on. <laughs> Gatorade yeah, just I, smashed you know, everybody's yeah. company. Power you know that Power sweaty Power activity you're doing? How about a bubbly Power, drink? Powerade's just fucking Pepsi. It's like it's Coke yeah. and Pepsi here. It's like it's grasping at straws. Powerade's just... Powerade you settle for if there's no Gatorade. No one sees Gatorade. Gatorade yeah. next to Powerade and goes, give me, give me fucking Powerade blue over cool blue. Pepsi had a moment though. I, I it's more like McDonald's and Burger King in my mind. Yeah, like or like McDonald's winner. and like Roy Rogers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pepsi had that moment where the, 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 they were cool for a minute. I don't think they ever had like the market share, 
but they they were like aligned with like the pop stars and they did the the giveaway. There was a documentary on the kid who won the fucking plane. Yeah, yeah. it was the Pepsi halftime show for a while. They did the Pepsi challenge, right? That was the big thing. Can you taste which one is which? Yeah, Yeah. but that's never a good thing when your when your thing is like. Ours tastes like theirs too. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like. But ours dude. is blue. Yeah, you know, our can's and then, blue. I mean, Crystal Clear. I thought Crystal Clear Pepsi was one of the coolest fucking things that's ever happened. It bombed. Yeah. In the market, in but a, I was like, a... it's magic. They made it. It should have been the first like tip off that this is a wildly synthetic and horrible thing to put in your body. It's like we can make it brown. We can make it clear. We can make it whatever the fuck <laughs> we want because it's just yeah. a fucking cooked up in a science lab. Was but... there a taste difference in the clear? In crystal, I never I had so. the Crystal. No. Oh, no, no. I don't think so. It was, uh, it was just, you know, I don't know. They took out. The People just were freaked food. out. I mean, why would it fail? You'd think like. I think it. I think it's one of those things like you know, you, if you think you're drinking milk and you drink orange juice and it just. Yeah, blah, yeah, like yeah. Like your body just like. Yeah, that'll you ruin know? your life. Yeah. Ruin <laughs> your whole day, that dude. will ruin your life, yeah. man. That feeling is a bizarre one. Even if you think you're taking water and it's club soda, even that is like whoa. Like, yeah. it's just, it's like, it feels... me, the seltzer revolution is one that I hate. The water, fine. It's literally the essence of life. Drink the water, whatever. The people who drink seltzer. This is this spicy water. Ugh, this is an interesting face. take. You know, it's it, you it's that. equally as hydrating. Yeah, as, no, but, as water. But, but, but why would you but, why would you want carbon? Maybe, you're, maybe saying. you're a person who likes soda and you want to be healthier. Drink the fucking soda. You know, <laughs> fuck you. You know, it's just drink diet soda like an adult, <laughs> and then drink your water. You and know? what about alcoholic uh, sodas? You know. I feel like this company has a vested... A couple uh, of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I feel like those. it will pull back the hate on all no, the sodas. Listen, you want to drink a carbonated soda? You want to drink carbonated alcohol? Carbonated water is just... I don't know. It's a waste of time, I it's think. A, it's a hot take. It's a strange hot take. I, 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 I'm with you 100%. People who drink seltzer act like it's some fucking like, magical <laughs> I know, I think... I got a buddy that just keeps like a 24-pack in his car. Well, I don't, yeah, they have... That's what I mean. Like, they, they have tons of it. They I, like swear by it. It's like... I almost find it stranger if it's... The like no flavor. If it's like yeah. a just yeah. like just the club soda. Yeah, but if you have like if you have, I I love a good. You give me a black cherry like uh, seltzer, dude. It's got to be Schweppes or Canada <laughs> Dry. Anything else, you're out of your mind, dude. Give me a fucking even a lime, dude. Give me a little some minute. Give me a little dash. <laughs> give me a little dash. Sometimes you you're at night, you're doing other stuff. You feel like that it feels like you're drinking a beer a little bit. You know what I mean? It tricks your mind into being like I got a nice little you're carbonation. Simpleton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a couple bubbles can do to these people's minds. Yeah, it's the Get palate, dude. It's, the, it's either that. Or it's like I look, I say I have an IPA in the fridge and I have a club soda. I'm like, let me start with the club soda. They still want the IPA afterwards. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. Lube up the throat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Then I drink both. But, uh, <laughs> it feels like a. Uh, yeah. So the special is like a cool look at the uh, at the comedy club, I feel like. Yeah. yeah so which is I, something I, I, I think we take for granted here in New York. Sure. Uh, and I feel like if you're a comedy fan and you're in one of these cities far away in the middle of nowhere, you can't make it to New York. Like the club is as, you know, not as important as the comic, but like right up there as sure. far as the atmosphere and what you see and how it goes. So giving a people a, a look into that, I think, is a cool wrinkle on yeah, it. Yeah. The comedy so they so the comedy cellar is four rooms within a block of one another, and they're all totally different rooms from like the original one. This is like a hundred and 20 people, then you got Village Underground, 250 people, you got the Fat Black Lounge, just like 80 people, and then you got the bar, which is like maybe 100 people, and they all aesthetically are so different looking. And even though they have the same comics, they have like totally, even the crowd, it feels different. So the comic, you gotta kind of like adjust based on the room. If you're in the Village Underground, a bigger room, you gotta kind of like play up versus yeah. the lounge feels like is a little more experimental. We can fuck around. The bar show feels like you're in an actual bar show. So you can get like, you can kind of, I don't know, it just feels. They have all these different energies, so I feel like I wanted to uh, do something that was like just kind of show how a comic working at you know arguably the best club in the world could yeah. do all of those in one night. So I did the just the four rooms in one night, and then I decided because again I had a ten week old and it wasn't enough to just do that. I was like I'm gonna direct it and edit it myself, which Oof. was which is why I shot it in the end of January and it came out in October. Uh, because <laughs> <laughs> I, forgot, I didn't incorporate the amount of the lack of free time having a child uh, would you know yeah. would uh, would but it 
it was a lot, dude. We we ran it twice, so we did essentially. I did eight spots in in two nights and just tried to run the whole. And I just did showcase sets, so it was just me doing fifteen minutes amongst another lineup of people. Nobody in the audience like knew it wasn't like my fans there yeah, or anything. Yeah. So it was like another kind of. And we had no added lights. We added nothing. We didn't change like the sound or anything. So it's like to me, it's as it's as close both as a comic and an audience member to seeing what it feels like. You never can ever recapture what it actually is in the room, but right. this is like an off, it's not a glittered up, like this is the version of, and this was the whole point of it that I, when I was trying to come up with the idea, because I talked to production companies and a few companies were like, this is going to cost over $100,000. We're going to have to add all these lights. None of these rooms look the same. They're not going to match. I'm like, you're missing the point completely. I'm yeah, like, this yeah, is yeah. exactly the point. Yeah. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be gritty. It's supposed to be run and gun. And like, you know, and I, and like James Webb, who's the director of photography, he's the one that shot like Norman and Marilla's stand up special and all this other stuff. And on Netflix, he's like, he was the only one when I told him the idea it was like, Fuck yes, dude. I yeah, love it. And then yeah. I got Toby McMullen from Are You Garbage? And then Nicole Lyons, who used to produce my podcast. And they were just literally, dude, like we would run in, fucking set up like like this in a room. James would be on his little steady cam, like robo rot, uh, cop rig there. And then the second I was done, we would sit, go to the other. We didn't have four cameras set up in each room. It was like, it was just the, we had to break uh, down yeah. everything, sprint around to the next thing. And it was, you know, it was hard as hell, but I think it came out, you know good and it's quick i decided i was like it's the tiktokification of everything dude make it short you know it's like people don't need an hour from like most comics at this point just yeah. because i mean literally within the last four days i know five comics who have put out specials you know it's just <laughs> it's just a lot dude you know yeah. and i feel like uh doing something cool and unique and you've seen people like Akash and Stavros and uh, Schultz and all these people put out like little shorter things that are more bite sized that get people, um, you know, more interested. And also, I was thinking about, dude, when I first started watching comedy as a kid, Comedy Central Presents was like the thing I watched the most yeah, of everything. Yeah. And those were 22 minutes, you know, 30, but eight with commercials. So it's like something short like that feels like the. Um, you know, it felt like a good pace. For yeah, I, I liked it. I like how you started it when you were like, "I'll just show you," which I, I was like, "Oh, this is fucking sick." Oh, yeah, so I didn't thanks, know what man. it was going to be going into it, and then and I didn't know until just now when you said that it wasn't you know your crowd or anything like that. But at the end, when the credits were rolling, you're like, "Yeah, that's half the room. I'm not really sure what's oh, going yeah. on." Oh yeah. Well, that like, was why that, that was like a that was actually a great note by Ari because Ari had told me before I put it out. He's like, "You should like." show more of the behind the scenes stuff because initially I was thinking about putting it in between but I'm like it just slows it down I just wanted to show like jokes 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 and yeah, I'm like yeah. I'll put like more behind the scenes stuff in the credits because that's always fun you know and then yeah that fat black bar that show was we only had one shot at that show because the the second night it ended up they didn't they didn't do a show that night so we only had one shot at that fat black bar Ian Finance was hosting and they were like I mean, they were terrible. They were so <laughs> bad for Ian. And it wasn't just, it wasn't Ian's fault. Like every comic would just kind of march into their death. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Ian is, you know, I put it in the thing. Ian goes out, he's like, they're dumb. They're yeah. so stupid. He's making fun of them. And then he, his way he brings me on stage is being like, I have no recourse left besides to lock the doors from the outside and burn you all alive. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, this next comic's one of my best friends. You're like, good. You know? I, I was thinking about that watching it where I was like, I wonder how you felt. Oh, Ian, well, like, he, dude, I'm doing a special right yeah, here. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, get him up a little bit. It's classic Ian where it's like if he's not having a good time, he can't hide it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He can't just be like, hey, guys. But he did try, and they just weren't giving him anything, and he thought, you know, that might win him back. But, dude, for the first, I don't know, 11 minutes of that 15-minute set, I was just – it was just yelling into a void. I literally had a thought on stage being like, I guess I could say I did all three rooms of the guy. <laughs> <laughs> no one would really know, you know? Uh, but it wasn't until I like literally got the light to like wrap up. I just happened to see that couple in the audience and I asked them a question and it turns out they had this wild, insane backstory that I managed to and then to get in a you know, get a laugh and get an applause break out of that crowd who were so bad, it felt like Ian said he was in the background being like fist pumping. Like yeah. you know, they were But that's that's what I mean. Like that showing that is now comedy got so popular that I think people are into comedy itself. Right. Like it's almost like a sport. You follow, you know, the comics you like and you don't like and you wanna almost it's like fantasy sports. You wanna know who's the best and, and sure. who's doing what. And like to show that side of it, I think, you know, with live stream capabilities and, and behind the scenes stuff and paywalls and all that, I think you can show Here's the funny stuff, but also here's like how the sausage is made, and people yeah. will eat that up now. Yeah, and the thought of like, uh, you know, a crowd being like, "This is a fucking, 
a slot. Bad crowd. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, like that means, like, you know, for fans. And it does like, exist. I mean, listen, a lot of the times it is the comedian's fault. Maybe they don't read the room or whatever. But when it's everybody on the show, yeah. it's just that thing of, like, Hey man, it's fine. Just this is a group of people who need to never be in a room together at once <laughs> yeah. a second again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you guys are all I saw, individually Ian said that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah individually yeah. good people, but never together again because it's just we've <laughs> decided this, does not work. this is not this is not the collective. <laughs> it's like you go on a date and it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, we just did not have the chemistry. You're not a match. And You're not that's a match. not a thing about you or me. Yeah. It's just about us. Yeah. It's so like, well, it's you. It. It's you guys for sure. <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah, it is it was uh, it definitely made the experience uh, I have a theory I have a theory that like I think every crowd is kind of like make or break based on like one person. Like one person who will like whoop it up, laugh, clap. Oh yeah. And like like open the floodgates. The you cheerleader know? for the audience. Yeah, yeah you and need like, the, like, if you have but, one big laugher especially towards the front, it it makes the whole show better. What's worse is when someone's in the front and they're like very, they have terrible energy. They're, doing yeah, they're, they're terrible yeah. energy because people are all looking forward. That's one of the only people everyone in the audience can see. So it's like yeah. if you're right in front and you're shitty energy, that's why so many times you'll see comedians call it out. And yeah. it's like we do have this thing of like if everyone's laughing but one person isn't, we're always like, why the fuck isn't that person laughing? But if they're sitting in the front, almost 100% of comedians will address it, whether it's some like backhanded way or whatever, because everybody can see that person. Yeah, and everyone's like, fucking like this up. why isn't that guy fucking laughing? You know, yeah. you're like, should I not be laughing? Even it if it's subconscious. Like, like it's, exactly. You know, it's like, it's, it, it usually when, is. When we, when we do our, our live shows, it's like when you know they say our names and introduce us, there are sometimes crowds that are like, fuck yeah. yeah. And then there are crowds that are just like, Okay, like start the yeah, show. We paid money. And go. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I, and I think that you know when there's one dude, well, he's drunk. He's a or, or girl. I, I feel like it's usually a guy, but it's like you're drunk. You're a frat boy. You're crazy. Whatever your personality is, and and then it's like, oh yeah, okay, fuck yeah, like let's cheer. Starts the chant. Starts yeah. the the whatever. Uh, and you just don't know if you're gonna get that person or if, there needs you know. to just be someone in that audience who's like excited to be there and it's really infectious. Yeah. You know, it just Especially infects. in the smaller, right? What about yeah. what about comedy clubs with armrests? Like whenever I'm at Village Underground or whatever, Interesting the I, I don't know how to sit. I, if I'm if I'm, I'm never in the front, but yeah. if I was, I would certainly never cross yeah, my arms. Cause you, but sometimes in the back, I'm like, I don't have anywhere to put my arms. We have your table. You have I, a table. I but sometimes like the table, like you're like, looking this like, way. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. You're kind of sitting like and this, then what? And, well, and I'll be like, ah, I'm it's go interesting. Ahead. <laughs> it's interesting you say that too, because two things on that. Number one, a lot of times, if you ever call, if you see people sitting like this, and comics call attention to it, or they're like, uncross your arms, it's bad energy, whatever. It's like that. Ninety five percent of the time, they're always like, oh fuck, I didn't even realize yeah, right, right, right. because people are so used to like watching comedy on. YouTube or TV or or listening to podcasts, people don't know how to facially react. They yeah, forget yeah. that people can see them now. Like that's like <laughs> yeah. post pandemic where we're at. But also, it's like the the fat black fat black pussycat lounge before the pandemic was totally different. It used to be like actual lounge. It was like sofas. Yeah, yeah, there were yeah, like yeah. cushions and like big comfortable seats and that room was like not great because everyone was literally like, like sleeping. They were yeah. sleeping. <laughs> they, were like, they were so comfortable and there is something about comedy where it's like, yeah, the room's got to be cold. The chair's got to be like a little uncomfortable yeah. where you're sitting up straight because they want you like, pay. if you're too comfortable, if you have armrest and you're just chilling, like, right. you're you be on actively a fucking listening. throne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're actively listening because you're like, ah, God, my back. Oh, what did this guy say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I never yeah. even thought about it. I mean, everything matters either directly or indirectly, I feel like. You Nothing's know? worse than heat in a, in, a, in a comedy room. I mean, that's why it was like Letterman was always at one of the, like 65 degrees, like unbelievably cold. But like there's nothing worse than when you go on stage and you see people doing this. Like, yeah, and yeah. you're like, fuck, that's, this is going to be bad. Because what do you think of the comics who will just rock a, a towel and just be like, I'm going to sweat? And I'm I don't mind. I mean, it's like, I, I actually like. You're always in like a jacket and shit. I yeah, think. yeah. There's yeah. been times. Like, I wore like this, if I were to go up on stage with that, I would be pouring. I sweat. wore this on stage the other night and immediately, it was a 20 minute set and I like immediately regretted it. And <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no. And there's nothing weirder to me than taking your the jacket, jacket off. off. Once you committed, you got to go. it on the thing. No. Yeah. But it's also kind of like if you're like higher energy, and stuff. I kind of like feel, when I get off stage. If I sweat, it feels like it feels like if you go to the gym and you sweat. You know what I mean? Like I feel yeah, like I, I I not only did my material but I performed. Right, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Versus being like, yeah, if you leave the gym without sweating, sometimes you're like, I guess I did. I did everything I said I was gonna do, but did I really get like a work? Like, why aren't yeah, I sweat? Yeah. You know? But um, I remember like D. Ray Davis. I opened for him once years years ago, and he had a a towel. So he he would have like a bucket of like ice ice and then he had a towel 
that was wrapped around a metal spoon <laughs> that was soaking wet and sitting in the ice. So it was like a freeze. So he would walk over <laughs> I love and it. dab himself with like a, a little, like a cloth popsicle, essentially. <laughs> yeah. And dab Yo, himself. Bro, and I was like, that's, yeah. that's the coolest thing. D-Ray's my man. Yeah. I love that. that, that what, what, what do you need on your rider? I need a fucking cloth, a spoon, yeah. a bottle of ice, yeah. a bucket of ice. <laughs> like, and a bottle of tequila. Usually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's yeah. Someone awesome. told me a story recently. I think it was Nick Tarani. I think we were, we were talking and he was telling a story about how his buddy was at his pediatrician when he was a kid. And she was an attractive woman. And he got hard. And she was like, don't worry about it. This happens. And she came back with a cold spoon and smacked him in the dick with it. And it just went down. And I was like, is that a Wait, thing? Wait, this happened to Nick? It happened to Nick's friend, he said. I th- I'm pretty sure it was Nick who told me. And I was like, is that a th- Like, do doctors just have a bunch of spoons in the freezer in case you get hard? <laughs> like, I've never heard well, of that. Did, my... my question is, I'm why did it have Google to be a cold spoon? <laughs> why did it have to be a cold spoon? Couldn't it just be like a, a sh- spoon. the shame of being like, oh man, that's super embarrassing. If you're a guy who's hard in front of, uh, against your own will in front of uh, a pediatrician, <laughs> I feel like a cold spoon's not going to make it go away. <laughs> Unless it makes you come and then you're I like, like that, that, that might make it, you know, yeah. do it again, do it again. Do it again yeah, for me. Yeah. Pabs, can you Google that real quick? Like cold spoon cold trick or something spoon, like that? Cold spoon, cold spoon trick. donor <laughs> trick? Cold, cold spoon doctor. I mean, there could erection. also just be something between, you know, like if you start to beat my dick, maybe it's going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, Self yeah. Self-defense. That also thing. feels like it's probably got like, there's probably like a law against like <laughs> yeah, it's like beating a kid's like dick a as a doctor. Salt. Yeah, yeah, it feels like <laughs> part of the uh, Hippocratic oath. That's what you remember right before you crash. <laughs> You're like, oh fuck! <laughs> I got a doctor hit me with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing on uh, Reddit. There's there's a story. Was was Paz, Were you in that? Was that an out of order meeting? Were you in that? Yeah, I believe that was uh, Greer's friend. It was Greer's friend. But okay. it's a Reddit story. But yeah, so, so that's uh, one of those like you know urban legends that someone's like, no, my friend, my friend told me, and it's like, no, they didn't. They what didn't. like one thwack with it and it went away, or was it like a beating? I, I'm picturing <laughs> it like a uh, one of those like tuning forks, like bong. Yeah, bong, yeah. Bong. I was picturing <laughs> like, like a gong. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> read read uh, some of the story, or is that it? It's just so like, no, yeah. So there's this YouTuber Clint that tells this spoon story, but there are like medical reports of how to get rid of an unwanted erection. And it does include cold water, blah, blah, blah. Sure. So, but there's also this ad from, I believe, it looks like an old ad that says the sexual temperance spoon. It's the only thing that'll get away, get rid of a boner. <laughs> sexual temperance? temperance spoon. <laughs> well, here's the thing, though. Sounds like something from, like, X-Men. Just by, just like, actual laws of physics, right? Like, if you... If you hit any part of my it body with a spoon, too. it will bring blood to it, yeah. right? Because yeah. it's like, that's... But maybe if maybe it's more like you hold the cold spoon on yeah, the dick. Yeah, holding a cold and spoon. And then it Dude, then it just becomes away. a kid from a Christmas story with your dick on yeah. a cold spoon. You just get stuck. <laughs> like, I had pre-cum on it. It's yeah. wet. It's going to freeze now. <laughs> Dude, that is quite the tale. I love these things that are like urban legends prior to the internet because it just means that like enough people retold that story and stole that story as their own dude or not even pawned it off it, it's like, it could also just be also in the early parts of the internet too where like my buddy two days ago just texted me a picture he's watching tv and there was like a infomercial for like john Bastow and he was like john Bastow's alive do you remember that guy he was yeah, like the six no. minute ab or whatever oh, yeah. guy he, and he was like he, yeah he, yeah he, and that he side had a turn. like head but he, there he was, was like that ab, there was that rumor like, that he died in that tsunami and like everyone's <laughs> like that guy's just dead he like couldn't like crunch his way out of it and my buddy thought until two days ago he was dead he's like this guy's still alive you know? and still walking I, late I night ads would love more so than the john belushi grave i would love to be the product of a internet death hoax. Yeah. Because I think that's also awesome. I think that shows you're either, like Eminem was killed like 20 times. Sure. And it just shows that you're like, that's like, because he's a megastar. Yeah, yeah. But Lil it, Wayne has been too, but he But he actually died almost died yeah. every time. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're like a John Bastow, it's like, obviously he's not like an A-list celebrity. Sure. But he did his thing to the point that like, you say that, like mostly everybody knows who he is. Yeah. And is enough of a thing that they go, no shit, that guy's dead. Like, yeah. they, they, it matters. Yeah. And then you can be like, no, I'm alive. Like, making a, hey, internet, like, timestamp, like, I'm alive, being the product of a conspiracy theory that I'm dead, oh, I would fucking <laughs> love that. We, we, uh, 
we 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 fake killed Jerry McNamara from Syracuse one time. Oh yeah, and uh, it was back like before we really, really respected the power of the internet. Like, sure. like it's a that's a really fucked up thing to do. Like, true. Like he was especially getting, with their family. Season. Like yeah. he, yeah. he said, like people were reaching out, being like, "Are you okay?" And, 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 <laughs> no, and, I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who, text who texted a dead person being like, "Hey, you good?" <laughs> yeah. It was a very strange. Maybe maybe his family reaching out to yeah, their yeah, family, yeah, 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 yeah. but he had to put out like a. a Something on social media, right? Being like, don't know what's really going on, but like, I'm fine. How did you do it? Are you f- we just, I think we just said it on the podcast. Yeah, right? I, I think I think we it's just like said early it. days. Of the there, podcast. there was a graphic made. I think it was. <laughs> we did circulate a graph. Yeah. Yeah. We probably yeah. made like a, like a black and white you know, <laughs> date. I could be wrong. We sent date. out like funeral arrangements <laughs> yeah. and like and awake times and. Views. Everyone we, believed we, us like a bunch of idiots. We, we, we paid off the police to say it happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was. That's uh, a, Pete Holmes has a joke about that where he's just like. People are like, why did you believe me, you moron? It's like, I don't know. It's just what I do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Things happen. You told me something. I'm not the villain in this story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Why would I automatically assume at all times you're lying to me? <laughs> but we we were like, we were thinking like Jerry McNamara is like a perfect level. This is especially, you know, many years ago. It was like very popular in, in his circle. Sure. Not too famous that it would like be co- immediately debunked. And it worked. And uh, was he it was furious at you guys? I don't think he was. Think he was. And he knows it was you guys. I like, think so. I, I don't know if he knows it specifically us. I think it was like Barstool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I would like never do something like that now. That's sure. like so. Dude, it happened. That is so, so crazy. Him, to do you somebody. haven't seen him, obviously. Oh, we, I never even met him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we were like buddies. He came through, did the podcast. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like early days. We were like, who's someone who's famous but not too famous? Boom, Jerry McNamara. He's dead. And. and you have to be like, hey guys, I'm alive. Like, <laughs> oh, Dude, they did that. it with the. Uh, they, I feel like in sports it happens all the time where like someone gets cut unexpectedly and it's like, oh, well, he fucked his teammate's wife. And then you're like, what? Dude? Why would you <laughs> yeah. say that? Yeah, right. And it just right. happened with the Blackhawks where uh, Corey Perry got cut. And they're like, well, like, like, very, like, I had friends texting me being like, dude, this is nuts. And I, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, Corey Perry fucked Connor Bernard's mom. And I, I just, and I just like I was like, well, that's probably not true. Yeah. And they're like, well, it's out there. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, dude, that like, means I, less than nothing. Yeah. And then it got big enough that Corey Perry had to release a statement. I think he uh, he has some well, an issue with alcohol, but he was like, he's like, I have I have to work oh, on that's myself. That's even but worse like, to be like, by yeah, the way. to but be like, like, by the way, I'm actually going through something terrible. Yeah, but, it uh, did not. I think he had like he's like it did not affect my family, my my teammates or their family. He did he didn't say same, it, but yeah, he was like, it did not affect my teammates. Well, that's like the 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 Delonte West fucking LeBron's mom. Like that had. Legs. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm Tyler still, Sagan fucking I, I'm Horton's still, wife. I'm still on the fence about. It. I'm like, I don't know, that might have it. That's what's so weird about all that stuff, man. Because now, and this is why I hate Twitter even more than I used to, is the fact of like now that anyone can just buy the verification. Like, if you're just scrolling and you get yeah. that, I don't know why the for you is the first thing and how to get it off that, but it's like I opened, I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. Like, you can't get it I, off, right? I, it's I, mine, mine, mine just sticks with following. It, no, it, it the first me. column is I have to swipe over to get to the follow. To get to yes. my followers, I open mine. I'm just on following. It, it always. It's, it's I don't. Very nice. I don't think of it. At, Have you at not first, updated? I just open it up and I just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and inevitably, something jumps out at me where I'm like, I wouldn't follow that person or want like that. Today it was. Uh, I guess Mia Khalifa was doing a video about Palestine. No, I think it was yeah. about marriage. <laughs> and it, it, some guy with a check, his caption was just, "So I guess we're letting whores talk about marriage now," and I was like. Who the fuck? Why the fuck am I following this person? Yeah. Who talked this way? You know what I mean? Right. And I was like, I'm not. It's on my for you well, page, see, and this is not for me. I don't. <laughs> I don't want this guy. I, I always think it's somebody that I follow that retweeted that or yeah, something. Because yeah, then I'm like, what place. asshole did this? And yeah. then it's like, oh no, what? You know, they just. It's but just that so for you is like. Okay, yeah, somebody I follow likes this, but that does not but, mean, I, you know. But they'll also taking put a lot people, of liberties with they'll that. They'll also put, like, I, I basically now look at Twitter for, like, baseball news and, like, mm-hmm. and updates and, like, off-season shit. And, like, there'll be someone to be like, oh, Yankees getting Soto. And I'm like, what? And I'll yeah. click, and it's, like, a guy with 400 followers, but he <laughs> pays for the blue check. And you're like, who, what is it? You know, like, yeah. what's going on? That's that's a, that's a game, the, uh, you the know, fake. On, on trade deadline days yeah. and hot stove days. That was that's a. It's like you Jeff Passan, but with like the wrong spelling of yeah, his we, name, but it's still his image. Yeah, but, uh, we've been fighting that one at Barcelona for a long time. You got to know that like, there's always somebody who gets got every yeah, year. Like yeah. ten, you know, ten years in a row on uh, running, somebody gets got on it. But or even if it's just like they put quotes, like they're very close on the, you know what yeah. I mean, that kind of a thing. Well, you know what they do now? They did it with um, 
yesterday. This wasn't a fake thing. It was like one of those, like, it was like maybe NFL memes or something like that. And it was like they put news in caps lock. And they put, yeah. they put, then, then if you read the killing itself, there's really no news. It says, there's a chance Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> leaves the Raiders. Raiders, uh, where he is now? Yeah. Where, leaves the Raiders this offseason and would be considered a backup possibility, uh, uh, a, a starter possibility in, in New England. <laughs> and then, like, someone traced it back to, like, Jeff Howe, who's a former Pats beat guy, right, for the athletic. And he's just like, it was just him I being guess like, it could happen. It was just him being like writing an article about like what the future could hold for Patriots quarterbacks. He's like, this is a potential thing. Like, right, like, right. And it's like a possibility right, out there. It had like 3.4 million tweets, uh, uh, quote tweets. Of yeah. Like, like, no, it's, it's Jeff Howe was like, no, I wasn't saying it's like, I didn't talk to anybody. I'm just saying that's that something might that happen. could happen. Yeah, no, I, mean, I want to ask you, though, man, as a diehard Mets fan, what are you going to do if the Mets don't get Yamamoto or Soto or any of these big guys? I feel like, um, I mean, Soto is the guy. I would love them to just go all out for that. More concerned about the Yankees getting him almost than the Mets not getting him because that will fucking yeah. suck a dick. If and Yamamoto, because then Yamamoto is the first free agent that both guys are. I mean, neither of no, neither teams are going after Otani for some reason, but it's like also whatever he's Dude, older. Dude, Otani just lost himself like three hundred million dollars by getting that injury. They said he's going to get like five hundred million. I, I still, I feel like he would have had something like comical like, yeah like the blue jays might get him which is now yeah. that's what i'm hearing today, the blue jays the yeah. blue jays are like in like heavy wow. t- but the blue jays they also this is so funny because this is like if this is true then ken rosenthal is going to not be allowed to go back to toronto because they they put out this thing they've been talking about it all offseason like otani is so secretive about his whole like process of going around to these yeah. teams that if you this agent's been like if you release any details You're about right. like our thing it's. They said like there's gonna be repercussions. Which or, like, is whatever it's the such fuck. a gangster. I think of him as like a samurai. You know yeah, what I mean? like, yeah. There's a code, and if you break it, you are. Yeah, like, yeah. You're out. But so Ken Rosendahl reported at two in the morning that like they all the the Blue Jays met with him in in Florida. So now all the Blue Jays fans are being like, Ken Rosendahl, you fucked us. You fucked <laughs> yeah, us. Don't fucking yeah. bad. Like well, because so like somebody. Those are such a thing you say though, and yeah. then uh, guess what? The Blue Jays come in ten million dollars by the other next guy. Yeah. You're good. That's where he's going. Because also like. Some fucking janitor sees it and says something you're right. holding against, like the G. I don't know. Somebody's, like, yeah. yeah. I think you put that threat out there to hopefully shut everyone Make up, but you don't actually hold it against someone right. if they have the biggest contract. I, I think that's, yeah, more like you better not be running to the press talking about yeah. it and like using me as bait and, and leverage for another guy. It's going to be I, interesting. It sounds like they really want Yamamoto. I, I, I think they are, I think they got really good unexpectedly. Fast, yeah, and we're like, let's make a quick run at a title here. Yeah, got the old guys, and once that didn't work, I think they kind of are recommitting to like building the right way. I think they were smart to immediately, you know, like give up in like four months, like, be like, we're out, we're out. Totally, I, I really think that was never the plan, but right. all of a sudden it was like we just won the hundred games. But I will say it is gonna. Be, this is the first free agent with Cohen as the boss, where it's like him, them, and the Yankees are after the same person, and it's gonna yeah. be like. Interesting if the Yankees still kind of pinch pennies, or if Co- if the if the Yankees get him, Mets fans are gonna Yankee Mets fans are gonna be more angry that the Yankees get him more than Yankee fans are gonna be excited that they got him. Totally, uh, that's a hundred percent a thing, and I, I that hopefully eventually changes over the course of time. But that still is very much in my mind of like, don't let them get. Him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Soto is the one. Soto is the fucking one. There was a minute there, like, early this season where he was, like, kind of struggling, and I was like, I don't know, is this guy worth, like, $400 million? Yeah. And then, like... He has Ted Williams' is... numbers through his first, like, five years. Yeah. Of the... It's <laughs> like, he's, he's like, like... He's, like, 17 years old. It's yeah, fucking... Yeah. Absolutely. He might be one of those guys, like, a pool holes guy. I'm like, are you really, like, 24? I don't yeah. think this... I don't yeah, think this, he looks... I don't think this is possible, He looks dude. older, it, for it sure. It makes no sense, Yeah, but... dude, he's gonna get... He's gonna get a... Cra- I mean, he turned down flatly 14 years, 440 <laughs> Just million like, dollars nah. <laughs> as, a, as a, a but I was before he got traded to Padre so he was he was like 23 years old and someone's like here's 440 million dollars and he was like get the fuck out of my <laughs> face <And you're> like, <laughs> yeah. what? not even like a consideration here's, here's the next six generations of Soto's so, uh, set up for life success and he was like <laughs> I, I'm gonna bet on myself. You're like, how much more do you need? <laughs> and he's probably gonna get it. It's and he'll fucking, get it. It's fucking that crazy, fucking man. Son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, uh, so the special's out. Mike uh, Feeney, a night at the Comedy Cellar on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Mike Feeney Comedy. Uh, watch it. Send it to some friends. Tell it people. And uh, yeah, at I am Mike Feeney on social media. But I would love if everyone checked out the special. Beautiful, Go man. Check it out. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Appreciate Good it. To see you guys. Thank you very much, Gracie. Yeah, hey, everybody. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Click that button. Or I'll cut off my finger.